There's no doubt that Alan Rickman's Hans Gruber is one of the all-time greatest bad guys in a movie. Not only did he provide some epic one-liners, even stealing John McClane's saying, yippee but he also gave us one of the most iconic moments from the film. Of course, we're talking about his dramatic fall that signified the end of his reign of terror. Naturally, the actor didn't really fall to the floor because A, there are unions, and B, the floor hurts. Just ask all those wrestlers who participate in hardcore death matches. But because of the slow motion effect, it gave us the illusion that Alan was shocked as he fell from hundreds of feet in a moment suspended in time. However, the truth is, he did fall just not a hundred feet. Using a blue backing stage, Alan was held by a rope and the team would release him to fall 40 feet onto a crash pad. To give him the shocked look though, the stunt team got a little sneaky, as explained by stunt coordinator Charlie Piserny in the movies that made us. The team was supposed to release Alan on the count of three, but they did it on the count of one. Hence the look of absolute horror on his face. <laughs> that he doesn't spin around in the middle of the hole and land on his head and kill himself. Uh, they were very careful to make it my very last shot on the film. The best part? They did this stunt five times, but director John McTiernan asked if they could do it a few more times. Poor Alan must have been a nervous wreck after filming this scene. The villain wasn't the only one to experience all the adrenaline and rush of blood to the head. Bruce Willis also got in on the action in more than a few places. I really like Die Hard. I yeah. really Die Hard was was actually some of the some of the first work that I've done in a while that I really I'm very excited about it. Everyone remembers how John McClane was willing to walk through glass to rescue his wife, right? Turns out that was all a bit of clever editing and special effects. If you pay close attention to the scene, take a closer look at his feet that appear larger than normal. Now, that isn't because Bruce wears really big shoes or is retaining a lot of water. Nope, those are actually special shoes molded from his own feet to give the appearance that he's barefoot. It's kind of what Peter Jackson and his team did to get the Hobbit feet in the Lord of the Rings movies years later. But no one was forced to walk through glass or suffer too much here. Bruce's big moment in the film, though, came when he leapt from the building with a fire hose wrapped around him. As it turns out, there was an element of reality to this stunt. He had to jump from a five-story parking garage ledge to an airbag 25 feet below while the stunt team exploded bags of gasoline around him. Now, remember, Die Hard was one of Bruce's first major action roles at the time, and he'd certainly never done stunts on this degree of difficulty, but he insisted on doing this one. So the team lathered him up with fire-resistant gel and wished him a nice trip on his fall. Speaking about the stunt afterwards, when I jumped, the force of the explosion blew me out to the very edge of the airbag I was supposed to land on. And when I landed, everyone came running over to me and I thought they were going to say, great job, attaboy. And what they were doing is seeing if I'm alive because I almost missed the bag. Bruce joked that the stunt team made sure that this was his final scene to shoot in the movie just in case things went very wrong. Everyone's chuckling about it now, but we're certain they weren't at the time. And that reminds us of another scene that almost went pear-shaped. Remember that part where John McClane falls down the ventilation shaft in Die Hard? Well, this happened to be a lucky accident, and we mean that both figuratively and literally. But first, take a look at the scene. Doesn't look too intense, right? And Bruce was actually filmed dangling from the shaft to give it some authenticity. But he made way for his stunt double who was supposed to grab onto a nearby vent as he started to fall. What happened though was that he missed and continued to fall down the vent. The cameras continued to roll, but everyone was worried about the stunt double's safety. Fortunately, he wasn't seriously injured and the footage of the fall came out incredible, so it made the final cut of the movie. Sheesh. Talk about suffering for your art, right? Now we need to talk about Nakatomi Plaza, the actual setting of Die Hard. Oh my God! What? What is it? Nakatomi Plaza. It's the most important monument in all of America. The building from Die Hard. Pretty much the entire film takes place in the building or its surrounding areas. So where did the filmmakers find such a perfect building to film in? Turns out it was right under the studio's nose the whole time. The real Nakatomi Plaza is the 34-story Fox Plaza building in Century City, California. Great. Sounds like the right place for filming, right? Well, 
Kind of. The setting was fantastic, but there were also other people working in the building. So the filmmakers tried to do what they could in the evening because the other departments weren't too happy hearing things go bang and boom while they were trying to have meetings a story below. As a result, Die Hard was also filmed in an interior set a few hundred yards away at 20th Century Fox Studio. But surely the filmmakers didn't blow up the real Fox Plaza just to get the right shot. That would be crazy and would almost certainly upset the other departments even more. Well, actually, they did blow up the plaza, a miniature version of it that is. When we say miniature, keep in mind that this was still a 30 foot tall structure, so it was smaller but still convincing enough to the viewer at home. It was a pipe grid truss work and then um, plexiglass panels and, uh, that were uh, screwed to it. The team even took photos of the granite of the original building and used the images to make it look even more authentic. And then, after all that hard work to make it as real as possible, they just went ahead and blew it up. As visual effects maestro Richard Edlund revealed, that proved to be the moment that tested the team's ability to take the effects to the next level. He said the following, The shot that turned out to be the toughest was the one that came in last, the third floor explosion. That happens right after Bruce gets kicked out of the way by the explosion that came up the elevator shaft and it blows out the whole front of the building. It took a couple of attempts, but they realized that the first test shot was still the best and used a lot of elements from that in the final shot. Considering how the scene came out in the end, it's safe to say, mission accomplished here. Of course, you can't talk about Nakatomi without mentioning the helicopter crashing into the building. After watching the movie, you'll never look at helicopters around skyscrapers the same way again. Turns out that a mix of real helicopters and remote-controlled ones were used for the scene, with a cockpit set being created for the close-ups of the actors. One of the biggest challenges for the filmmakers was that they couldn't fly a helicopter within 200 feet of the actual building, so they knew they would need to get creative with the shots and use clever cuts in the edit. Though exploding the helicopter into the plaza was a far easier task, since they just crashed the remote-controlled chopper into the miniature building. But while it was easy in that scene, it was pricey. Discussing the shot, Edlin said the following. The helicopter, quite an expensive unit, was radio controlled. We had three shots at this, at $3,000 to $4,000 per helicopter. They got it on the second one, and it was magnificent. Everybody was out there watching, and there was no question in anybody's mind at that point. It's amazing to think of how they tricked all of us into believing that it was a real chopper crashing into a real building, right? Well, there's a reason it's called movie magic at the end of the day. We're all friends around here, just like Rachel, Ross, Joey, Chandler, Phoebe, and Monica. You are a man. <laughs> However, they also had their own special props and visual tricks on the popular sitcom, so make sure you check out that insightful video. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and stay awesome.